Welcome to an enlightened hour of interactive talk. This is Guided Spirit Conversations with host Marla Goldberg. In this program, we spotlight guests from all over the globe who have helped others change their lives and will provide you with the tips, tools, and techniques that you need to help you make a difference in your own life. Now, here is Marla Goldberg. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? It's Thursday, and every Thursday is Guided Spirit Conversations Day. So welcome, and thank you for joining me. I'm Marla Goldberg, your host, and I'm here with Jamie Homeister. Jamie is an intuitive artist, an author. She is also the founder of the Chakra Graft, Chakra Graft System. I know I just put a T there. It's Chakra Graft System, which is a unique platform of, intu- for, of intuitive art for empowerment and self-discovery. And I'm so excited to have Jamie on here because we were talking all things. I'm an artist. I paint when I have the opportunity to as an abstract. So I love the idea of spiritual art. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to, to speak about my craft on your, on your platform. I appreciate that. My pleasure. I'm excited about learning more about your, your chakra graph system and how you got around. So I always like to start at the beginning. Were you a, a natural when you were young, like a child psychic, you know, and, and in tune with the spirits, or is this more like me, like a late bloomer? Um, I would say that I was very empathic as a child, and I did have some spiritual experiences very young. Um, I developed more into my talent or my gift a little bit later in life, right around 30 is really when things um, opened up for me and I blossomed into the potential of what I had and, and um, the, the gifts that were latent. Um, I lived in a pretty chaotic environment when I was younger. And so I was really pulling in a lot of information about other people's emotions rather than working with um, spirits themselves or uh, things of that nature. So did the information you get sort of help you tiptoe around the chaos that you grew up with? Absolutely. I was a pro at walking on eggshells and being able to navigate around the moods of my siblings and uh, my, uh, my parents as well. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal how what, we're, what we choose to get, to get born into and the experiences we get to have. So when did you decide to, which was your first path? Because there's so many paths we can choose from. Did you learn to want to develop your abilities, your psychic abilities, or did you go shamanic? Which, did you just go into the art? Sure. So I started actually, I, when I f- Uh, first came into my talents or my gifts, I was actually an artist by trade. I was a professional artist and I worked with acrylics. When I began um, exploring my talents and gifts, I had actually lost the physical ability to paint. And so it completely rendered me incapable as an artist anymore. And so I tuned into the journey inward through healing with um, mediumship. That was my first platform. And eventually the mediumship evolved into shamanic work. And then the shamanic work took me into intuitive art. So shamanic and mediumship, how does the, how do they work together? I mean, everything works together. I understand that. But starting as a medium and then moving into the shamanic work, because shamanism is a lot about nature. It's a mm-hmm. lot about seasons and the changes and, and, I mean, I know it's deeper than that, but, you know, where mediumship is working with people on the other side for people on this side of the veil, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead. So it's an oh, interesting yeah, segue it's in. an interesting crossover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, I began working with shamanic work because I needed to um, explore different methods of personal protection and personal empowerment. So even though I was working as a medium, I was having problems with being able to um, 
secure my personal space. And I was having problems with being able to create boundaries and personal boundaries. And that's because I personally had none. I had no boundaries whatsoever with the spiritual word world, but I had no personal boundaries in my waking life either. And I needed a path to personal empowerment and to self-discovery. Shamanic work really found me. It, um, you know, my initiation began in the dream time. And and I had wonderful journeys and uh, visitations that came through of the helping spirits that came to me in the dream time. And then that bled over into the waking life and the, and the natural world, which eventually all compassed me in and, and, and hugged me in and created a platform uh, for me, a solid ground for me to stand upon where I could rebuild myself and... Uh, and really create some personal boundaries, not only in my physical life, but in my spiritual one as well. It sounds like it gave you a safe haven. Absolutely. For protection. Absolutely. Yep. That's the word Absolutely. that keeps coming up. And so when you were in there, in the, the shamanic, tell me the next direction you went into, because it's so interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. So during the shamanic um, the shamanic training, and I'm always in training, I'm still in shamanic training, you know, it never mm -hmm. stops. But uh, during that really intense phase of my life during the awakening, I, uh, I, I was still working with other people. And then this time, you know, I, where I was working with mediumship and working with the deceased and the passed on, this became more about, um, working with others and helping them find their personal empowerment and learning by proxy as well. And eventually I came back to the arts. I regained my mobility and I regained the ability for me to use my, my hands and my fingers where I had lost it for several years, almost four years where I couldn't paint anymore. And this bled into the story of color. And I merged the original talent and interest of art into the shamanic path, but into the mediumship path and began exploring myself through color in new ways. Color is so powerful. And there's so many meanings behind color and how it comes in and it plays in one's life. So you founded the Chakragraph system. Let's talk yes. about what that is. Yeah, so... Um, when I began to offer my intuitive readings where, or even just for myself, when I began to give myself intuitive readings and use color, I found that for me, it would be very helpful to have a structure where things had a specific interpretation, just like in mediumship. You know, my teacher, Barbara Blecker, she always tells this hilarious story about how she would, uh, you know, used to get it confused between the, the dead and the living when she was giving her mediumship readings. And so the spirits would always put a daisy in the pocket of the deceased, you know, pushing up daisies for her to ah. know the symbolism of it, right? So you have this Brilliant. quick, this quick ability to interpret what they're trying to get across. I needed that same symbolism in my art. And so I was, I... I don't see exterior auras, I see internal colors. And this, by being able to quickly associate which colors and then match their interpretations, I would be able to, to quickly relate that information onward or relate that information to my personal body or my spirit or my emotional body and, and that of others as well. So we have seven main chakras and I know some are, you know, we're getting into more that are coming out. But so we are the colors, the basic, let's say we're just going to deal with the seven main chakra colors. So do those colors, are those the colors that you tend to use? And if one is stronger than the other, you look into that area of what the meaning of that chakra is for the client. Sure. So actually I use 108 colors and wow. this creates the embodiments of my reading. So how the reds blend with the blues, how the different variations that come from subtle colors and, um, you know, darker colors and how, where those colors, those 108 different colors show up in what particular chakra or area of the body, it tells me more about what that person may be holding emotionally, what um, their physical body might be doing, what uh, their, their 
previous experiences have been in the past, where they're going in the future. So it's not so much where I'm relating only red, orange, yellow, green, purple, blue. It's uh, how all those colors come together to form a story to create one cohesive story, not only of their past, but of where they're going in their year as well. That's amazing. So let's talk about your client comes to you. Oh, no, that's not where I'm going. I apologize. What I wanted to know is how did this form of artwork come to you? How was it downloaded or did you find it or did it find you? Absolutely. So I learned, um, I, I actually, I first began exploring orographs when I was working with a group in Louisville, Kentucky, and it was just a small medium ship group and we would gather together. And, uh, you, you know, a template was downloaded from the internet and it was like, okay, paint, you know, color the around the exterior of the template and see what their aura has to tell you. And I really didn't sync with that. It didn't make sense to me. I couldn't give a, a reading off of it. Like it just, it just didn't click. When, um, I, you know, I'm not entirely sure when I downloaded to bring the colors inward. Yeah, I don't really have a memory of that. I, I feel like it was just such an organic experience that it just happened, you know, it just, you know, all the colors just began to move inward because that's where I saw them rather on, than on the exterior of the aura. And it was, gosh, I think it was actually first made as a gift for other people when I was doing a, a group event and I just brought the colors in and from there I began to read the story and it was almost like this instantaneous thing where it made sense to me and I was able to form almost an hour long reading off of what was brought on the inside versus nothing that I was seeing or making sense of on the exterior of the body. Did that explain that okay? It did. Yes, it's fascinating. So you have 108 colors that you use. When did you, you know, determine what colors meant what in your process? Because 108 is a lot of symbolism, a lot of, you know, definitions. It absolutely is. 108 developed over time. When I first began working with the chakographs, there was maybe 18, 20. And, you know, a lot of it, like the reds and the, the orange and the real base colors that you would associate with the chakras, um, they went with their own personal, like their, their natural meanings, which is what makes sense, right? Red for power and, and um, you know, uh, maybe even aggression or, or overzealousness or overactive when it's a deeper shade of red, uh, you know, normal color associations that we would make sense of those colors or to me, how I interpreted those personal colors, right? Because everybody has a different way to interpret red or yellow or blue. Um, and then from there, it was all about creating color charts and how did the colors shift and change when you mix orange with a purple? You know, where did that color come from and what did that mean? So I sat with that color. I looked at that color and I asked, what does this mean to me? And I figured that was going to be the best way that I was going to interpret what shows up on other people's charts, because that's my own personal association with that color. And that's what spirit's going to pull from and draw from is that emotion that comes up when that when that color appears. They were tweaked and refined the more that I use them. And, you know, sometimes spirit would just say outright, that's, you know, this needs to be this thing. This is, you know, this is where people are holding catastrophizing or this sort of element. And they just developed and blossomed and bloomed over the years into the 108 that I'm able to pull from and, and, and decode. So in your book, do you have the 108 colors with the meanings and is there symbolism that's attached to it so people understand if you know you might see a dove or a pot or and when I say a pot like you know the pot of gold pot sure you know sure. the Irish leprechaun pot um, or whatever it might look like a whale a dolphin you know with the meanings that go along with that is that part of what's in the book and what you teach people through the book because this is an introduction to chakra graphs and there's so much material that's covered with how to relate the, um, the colors to different parts of the body, such as the hands, the arms, the feet, the, the shins, and um, 
all the different associations that can come from that, from one basic color, I tried to keep it simple and I tried to do 36. Well, I didn't try to do, I did do 36. I offered 36 colors. And as far as the symbolism goes, I use um, numbers, numerology. I use moon phases. I use spirals and just little symbolisms that's, that is um, meaningful to me. So I offered these as the interpretations that comes through the book as a starting point. And what I hope is that people will bleed in their own personal symbolism into their own artwork that they can then translate and share the, the meaning or the interpretation that comes through their hearts and their talents and their gifts. And, and um, create a, a cohesive reading from that as well. So I wanted to make sure there was still plenty of room that people could experiment and learn and grow through their own personal libraries as well. I love that because you're sort of like you're giving them, here are your basics and bring in your own personal touch. It's like decorating a home. Absolutely. Absolutely, because it's art, right? We want it to be yeah. free. We want it to be fun. We want others to, to feel engaged with the process. So. Absolutely. I, I just, I love the idea of doing this. And so what were your biggest influencers? You know what? I'll tell you what, we are about to go on a break in just one minute. I'm going to hold this question. I'll go on a break a little bit early. We'll come back and then I'll get back to this question as I take, I continue talking to Jamie Homeister and her chakra graph system. Stay tuned. Okay. And we're all clear. Good job. Sorry about those cues. I'm having troubles with my typing today. Don't worry about it. We're good. Yeah, that was perfect because it showed up as a little pop up on my screen, so I didn't have to switch over. So oh, good. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. I didn't know what was going to come up on your screen. But when you said 23 minutes, it's like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured before we get into a whole nother realm of questioning, oh, that sounded so bad. It felt like I was an interrogator. But, um, but about the system that we don't do, we don't cut you off in the middle of it. I want okay. to make sure we're able to give the full meaning of it. It sounds fascinating. Oh, thank you. I hope I'm answering your questions okay. I think you're doing a phenomenal job. Oh, thank you. And so, yeah, because I'm interested in, so when I study and I'm in, I continue my education, so we would be in a class and they'd give us these Crayolas and, you know, you close your eyes, you get into the energy, and then you go through, you know, like, you, almost like a voodoo body on paper, right? It's just the outline yep. of the body. And it's like, okay, and you, you put the colors where you see them, feel them, hear them, you know, you're taught to go. And so it's just amazing, like, what ends up showing up. Absolutely. And so it'll be interesting to see you know, if they do that with the body, do they do that with the body outline? Absolutely. Yeah. So I offer the body template. It's downloadable, but also in the book. And then, you know, I encourage them to really use the template, go inside, see what color wants to be where and uh, see what, you know, their own symbolism that comes up or they can use mine, you know, like I said. Yeah. So what's the medium? Point. Is it crayon, pastels, acrylic I paint? watercolor. And I do that because I love the freedom of it. And, you know, it's something that we really can't restrict or force. Water just wants to go where it wants to go. It's so true. So when you start, do you like wet down the page first so that there's more flow when you get the colors? Say that again. So when I do, when I paint and I've done watercolors, what I've done is I've sort of put a light brush strokes of water oh yeah you know yeah. to wet the page down and then because then color will just flows you Absolutely. know in an abstract kind of manner yeah okay and you start yeah. with darkest colors first or light colors because I was always taught with watercolor traditional painting go with the dark colors first and then you go with the lighter colors but it doesn't work the same way with you I just put whatever the colors want to go I follow that and um and let them speak for themselves seconds. Thank you. Be right back.
You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around. If you're just tuning in, I'm with Jamie Holmeister. Jamie is an author, intuitive artist, and the founder of The Chakra System, which is a unique platform for intuitive art, which offers empowerment and self-discovery. So welcome back, Jamie. Thank you. On the break, we were talking about how, first of all, the medium you use is watercolor. Correct. And that we were talking about the, the body template. I was sharing what I was talking about when I, when I go to class and because I still continue my education, how we have the outline of the body and we are given crayons to use. And you were saying how you use the watercolors. And so would the, you see if a body template, would you see that the inside had more color in it or would it be inside and outside the, the lines? I think that's subjective to whoever's looking at it or to whoever's interpreting. For me, I see everything condensed inside the body. That's where all the color shows up. So if I were out in a social setting and someone would say, look at their aura, I would just see everything on the inside. I wouldn't see the colors emanating from their exterior body. Which is so but interesting. So somebody else might have a beautiful, uh, like auric design on the outside of the body and be able to give you information from there. Absolutely. But, but yours is more on the internal and you get a lot of information from there. Do you, symbols and um, you, I think you had mentioned spirals and this and that come through and they have their own meanings. So yes. if you have a spiral, how do you know if the spiral is going up, the spiral is going down? I look for counterclockwise or clockwise motion. And then for me, that tells me whether or not the person is opening and expanding in this area of their life or whether or not they're in a, in a period of contraction and they're holding and they're drawing in. Interesting. So let's talk about your biggest influencers. Who okay. are they? Your teachers, your guides, the people who yeah. have been guiding you all these years? Absolutely. Everybody is. Um, Louise Hay is a big influencer because she wrote that wonderful book, How to Heal Your Body. And um, this helped me to recalibrate my thinking about what was possible with my own healing journey with PTSD and actually complex PTSD and, um, and how different parts of the body can hold emotions and store emotions over time. And then from there, we can manifest things like illness or, you know, um, just uh, we hold energy there. And, and this really fascinated me. And this, you know, some of her interpretations really cross over in my book with appropriate accreditation, of course. But, um, you know, she was a really big influencer of mine and still remains a really big influencer of mine. Um, as far as my personal journey goes, which obviously bleeds into uh, the professional journey, uh, would be Barbara Blecker, my shamanic teacher, Gina Millard, who was also one of my shamanic teachers, um, Tori Hartman, who created a wonderful oracle system about the chakras from her, you know, experiences of downloading at a really young age and then storing all of that information and, and being able to create a, a wonderful comprehensive little oracle deck that translates how color can be tied to emotion as well. And psychologically, the colors tied to emotion. I remember I was going to start a cafe and a friend of mine came in. She goes, well, you want to have orange in the morning with really peppy music because that you get people in and out that way. And then in the afternoon, you might slow it down a little, change the colors a little. But then at night, you, you know, reds and she was sharing all these colors and slowing down the music so that people can relax and, at, at the end of their day you know, have their meal, have their beverage, whatever they're coming in for and do it. And it, it's, it's powerful knowing the Absolutely. psychological effects of color. 
Absolutely. And, you know, this really ties together with how, you know, we translate color into our daily life, not only with what, how we, I mean, not only with chakra graphs, but how we decorate our homes, how we dress ourselves, how, you know, we, we fill our life with color, what colors we're attracted to most. Like, what does that say about us as a person? You know, so much. It's so true. Um, Chinese medicine also Mm -hmm. uses, you know, when you, you, they have the elements. And if you're an, a certain element, you will find yourself wearing certain kinds of clothes and colors. And, you know, so if you were metal, you would be more metallics and soft colors, you know, in, in, in minimalist in where you are. And I'm going to assume that it works the same way in general. Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that. That's great. So how has your spiritual journey improved your life? Oh, gosh. Um, when I started my awakening at 30, I was an entirely different person. I had no boundaries whatsoever. <laughs> I hadn't explored my personal trauma even a little bit. I was a walking Oh, a walking sleeper to my life. And, and, you know, I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. You know, there's a a pre and post spiritual or or awakening journey, right? How life completely transforms once you awaken to the mystery that surrounds us. And when you awaken to the, the possibility of potential, not only in yourself, but in others and what the universe may, may offer you. And, um, being able to go through my different phases, even though at the time I didn't understand, well, why is this happening? And why am I being drawn to this? And what could this possibly mean? Those steps were so crucial to my own personal development and my own personal expansion. And I'm talking about that, that deep spiritual healing that helps me as a person and created a foundation within me that I could be proud of, integrity, right? Where I had none before 30. You know, I I really didn't. I really didn't understand the concept of it. I was just floating around. So all these years and all of these classes and workshops, that's really what's helped me to develop on as well. You know, what is my personal integrity and what does, what do I stand for? And that creates, um, that creates better work on my part. That creates a better connection to spirit. That creates uh, better readings for others. The more I understand myself, the more I can really uh, empathize and understand that others have the exact same feelings and emotions and and that they're allowed to have those exact same feelings and emotions and, and how I can sit with that with compassion and understanding. Oh, absolutely. I truly agree with you on that and your journey because a lot of people, when they step in that, as someone said, who I absolutely adore, that one-way path, you go through that door yeah. and you can't go back, but who would want to go back? Who yeah. would want to go back to all the chaos and the dysfunction and the yep. abuses that not only other people give to you, but you might give to yourself? Absolutely. So those boundaries were highly important. And yeah. I'm with you on that because the same happened to me. So would you like to share a story about your transition into your path? Like some, you know, one of those big catalysts. So people know you're not the only one out there that it, they, you're not the only one going through whatever it is you're going through because we've all gone through it. So just yeah. trust that. I always say the good news is, is all this stuff is temporary because energy flows. So if you are going through something, if you just pause a minute and, and get out of your head, the flow will take you into your next phase of whatever it might be. So what was oh, yours? I love that. I love that. Thank um, you. My journey, when, when I went through my awakening, my spiritual crisis looked like um, a complete dismantling of everything I knew to be real because I had lost my ability to paint. And I was, I was getting high accolades at the time as a feather painter. And how I lost my ability was that suddenly, you know, one day I just knew 
I was not living the life I meant I was meant to live. I knew I was miserable. I knew I was breaching my own boundaries all of the time. I knew I walked on myself. I knew I let others walk on me. I knew I was making a lot of mistakes that didn't need to be happening. You know, the mistakes that you're like, why am I doing this during the time that you're doing it? And I, I got on my knees one day and I just prayed. And I don't remember praying since I was a child. And mm -hmm. I prayed to the universe and I said, you have got to help me here because I feel like my soul is dying. I really need your help. If you're out there listening, come help me. And within weeks, I had started to begin suffering with debilitating migraines. I lost the use of my right hand, which is my painting hand, my, my main functional hand. I lost the ability to really hold a paintbrush, to hold a fork. And the, all I could do was sit. All I, like, I was just forced to be still. And all I could do was sit. So what I did is I began sitting and I began praying because that's the only thing I could figure out to do. I had lost my practice. I had lost my business. You know, I couldn't complete my, my orders. I was just stuck. And I would just pray. And then in that moment of praying, I would have a release and I would feel myself just breathing and making mm -hmm. space. And in that space, I began to have conversations. And these conversations began with um, what sounded like a voice in my head. And I would be able to sort through very complex emotional feelings with these voices. And I thought, this can't be real. This can't be me. I don't, you know, I don't understand what's happening. And for months, this happened until the, the voices developed personalities and the voices mm -hmm. developed um, uh, uh, different, uh, different, art, different articulations. And uh, yeah, you know, they just began to get more complex and more real. And this was a really frightening time for me. I thought that I was having an emotional breakdown. You know, people around me thought that I was having an emotional breakdown. <laughs> Yet there was this side of me where this felt so familiar. And I just knew this was something to me. I began to find things like hawk feathers waiting on my doorstep when I would open up door. This was the natural world as it began to speak to me. And I, well, actually I began to listen, you know, I finally began mm -hmm. to listen that it was speaking to me. And, um, for months I just would journal and I would channel and channel and channel. And it wasn't until I began to experience, um, very personal messages for people and about it was almost as if somebody was talking to me and trying to get a message across for other people. And I would came brave one day, so brave. And I remember asking a, an acquaintance, I didn't even know them. I said, man, you know, I keep getting this message about your mother. And, you know, she wants to say you're, she's very sorry for what happened when you were younger but I don't understand why she wouldn't just tell you that and they're like oh my god my mother passed away and you know and then it began into more complex things like um how old they were when a trauma happened or you know instances around the trauma that they experienced or around their childhood a personal beloved item that they used to have and it was the spirits connecting through me it was the mediumship unfortunately I didn't know a lot of people at the time that could help me walk through it so mm -hmm. it was a path of just trust and discovery with my spirit team and being willing to just um step into the moments with grace and just not live in my head about it and just again being willing to trust that this was okay because again there was just this deep-seated understanding about what was happening and about what I was experiencing at the time and um that it was that it was okay and it wasn't a psychological break and it was, was something that was really truly meant for me and I know that sounds so big and so complex and it's like that could have went so many different ways had I let it or had I uh stepped ignored the signs way. ignored the signs exactly yeah exactly yeah. absolutely and, and it, it's powerful and I think what people out there need to to 
here, and this is, I think, the important part is sometimes spirit does bring us to our knees. They bring us to a place, not because they're trying to harm us, but they're trying to wake us up. They're trying to, so it's a way of sort of doing a spiritual shaking, like snap out of it and listen to what we're telling you outside of yourself. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah, it's a big wake up call. And so now in your, in your journey, um, you had to heal. And many people do. We bring things in from our past life into this current life. Lots of things happen to us in the current life that we choose to work through so we can heal. What would you like to share about your healing with our listeners? I would like to share that I began um, with a lot of dysfunction in my life and a lot of personal dysfunction in myself. Uh, You know, as I grew, I was just so emotionally immature because I was stunted back at the original points of my trauma. And and I'm, you know, physically I'm growing and, you know, psychologically Mm -hmm. I'm growing, but emotionally I was stunted. And when I took the time to stop and listen and follow the guidance that was coming through me and to me, uh, change and healing, deep healing was possible. And I really want others to be able to take that from my journey and to themselves that there are different paths to healing. And there are, you know, deep healing of deep traumas that feel just huge are, are ready to, well, if it's coming up, it's ready to go. Exactly. And it's so true. And, and repressing is just probably in, 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 not to be in judgment, but it truly, because we're as well as beings, as human beings, um, we're, we're the king and queens of repressing, right? We don't, we're taught not to deal with our emotions, stuff them down, stuff them down, stuff them down. If you don't deal with these emotions, if you don't deal with what's coming up, it's going to regurgitate all of your life, whether you want it to or not. And then you'll be back at square one, trying to figure out like, why me? Why is this happening? What do I need to do? And asking for help, which is what you talked about, Mm -hmm. is one of the big important things. Ask for help. Actually, when I was doing a promo on you today, um, I was talking about how you need to ask for help. And then it will, you know, something will intervene. Some being on the other side will help you and things will start to fall in place. But you have to pay attention because it might not be what you're looking for but it might be what you need. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Jamie Homester and her, the chakra system, the chakra graph system. I'm so sorry. Chakra graph system. Stay tuned. All right. Good job. All clear. Back in a couple of minutes. Thank you. I am so sorry, Jamie, that I keep messing that up. No, that's okay. I panicked on that last question. I saw you touching your ear and I'm like, ah, I'm running out of time. So I concluded that probably in a way that didn't make sense to the audio listeners, but thank you for bringing it to a way that did. Yeah, it's, it's important. People need to, you know, they don't get it. They just think life is affecting them. It's all about life and it's doing it to them. A, we've asked for it. I'm sorry to say we asked for these things. I didn't understand it for the longest time. And now I'm into the whole pre-birth planning thing, you know, in the process and how it affects us and affects our growth. And by the way, I, I apologize to her. I almost fell off my chair a couple of times. I'm sitting on a ball in one of those ball chairs. And all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> so if you see that happening, I just had visions of me falling over like a weevil. <laughs> if that happens, keep talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I, so what is feather painting? I wanted to ask you on the air, but but you're sort of on there. What is feather painting? You use a feather, the side of a feather or the quill? I actually painted on the feather. So I would paint very realistic and intricate portraits of, hopefully I would be able to do the actual animal that um, owned the feather. No, I mean, there were people who had their birds naturally molt, and then I was able to paint a portrait of their bird on the feather. Um, or I really loved doing like bears and wildlife and hawks. And of course I wasn't able to, to use those, but um, but yeah, so it was intricate, intricate animal portraits, very realistic. I actually actually went viral with it yeah it was very small it went viral um right before my awakening and 
it was it was it was very very popular very cool so very cool time in my life and you know what I, it is just so powerful that you had the ability to do this small intricate work i mean what great eyesight you must have a friend uh, of mine I, paints on rocks <laughs> like god i can't see that small <laughs> yeah i had i had great dexterity at the time i still haven't recovered my dexterity but um yeah, I did at the time. And so I was able to do it with, with, with time and patience. And it was definitely a skill set that required a lot of focus. So, yeah, you know, I'm hearing maybe you weren't meant to focus so hard on something. And in what you do now, you don't have to have that same intensity with your Absolutely. focus. Absolutely. I think I apply yeah. it though. So I think I burn myself out sometimes uh, through my readings, but um it's you know it's a balance everything is such a balance that's where those boundaries come in absolutely <laughs> i'm still practicing them i'm still learning them Ten seconds. even all these years later You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, and thank you for sticking around. If you're just tuning in, I'm with Jamie Homeister, and Jamie is an author, intuitive artist, and the founder of the Chakra Graft System. And that system is a unique platform of intuitive art to help with empowerment and self-discovery. So welcome back, Jamie. Thank you. So it is charity shout-out time, and we're going to talk about your charity, Home of the Innocents. So yes. let's talk, what is Home of the Innocents? Home of the Innocents is a space in Louisville, Kentucky that offers a space haven or a, a, um, a safe haven, pardon me, for children and adolescents who uh, may have been abused or who may have been victimized, uh, who need extra psychological care. And um, it is, a, 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 just a huge healing space for so many of our area's youth who need that safe space to be able to go to, who need those safe adults that they can turn to. And um, it just offers so many opportunities for them for their emotional healing and physical healing. Just, it, it is just such a powerful and good space. Is it an overnight, like you have, you, they live there? A residence oh, yeah. or is it okay? Yeah, both. I mean, children can live there, teens can live there, but it can also be for um, recovery periods or a weekend or a safe place for a night until other family members are located. So it's just um, something that would definitely provide children with a little extra care than you maybe might not get or, or training, I should say, too, that you might not get if you go to a foster home overnight. That's, I was, I think that's a beautiful, a beautiful concept because there's so many kids that are pulled away due to their environment and rightly so they need to for their safety and they're, they're pulled away and the kids are scared and they don't understand they all they know are their parents aren't there and they go into a home that God only knows, you know, how they're take, going to be taken care of. I think it's brilliant that to, to have a place designed to house, to support that mental health, the physical health of children yeah, and to help absolutely. them heal at a younger age. So they don't yeah. have to go through what we went through. They'll go through absolutely. their own list of so. And so the website is the home of the innocence.org home of the home of the .org. Please check it out. Please see how you can help them. Who knows? Maybe you'll want to Start one of your own somewhere else where you live. So you never know. Jamie, we have um, a few minutes left. And I wanted to talk about what led you to writing this book. 
to wanting to share this process with other people? Okay. Uh, over the years, I have completed over 700 chakra graphs internationally. And there are so many people who are just so interested in how I was able to delve into the color and how I was able to make these associations and how I was able to give such detailed readings. I began to teach workshops in my area uh, that supported people on their own color journey and that supported them through just the way that I had uncovered this about myself and how I was able to read for others. And I really, I, I felt spirits calling to take it larger because I think this is thing, this is something that so many people can just um, incorporate themselves into to make it their own unique piece of art. But if they needed a foundation to get started, this is a launching point for them. Or if they just wanted to use my interpretations and mind symbolism and create readings from that, that's totally fine too, whether it's for themselves or for others. But I think the more people that feel empowered to use art in a, in a way to connect spiritually to their communities or to themselves, the better. So I am all about sharing the love and sharing the gift and passing it onward. It's all about empowerment for me, helping others feel that. empowered in their life. It's so important. So where can we find the book? You can find the book on uh, target.com. You can find the book on amazon.com. You can find it through Barnes and Noble. You can find it through my website. If you'd rather have me send you a copy, uh, I would love to do that. So there's so many different ways uh, that you can access the, the chakra graph book. It's called Introduction to Chakra Graphs. Paint your way through the subtle bodies and uh, you know, begin, begin exploring it for yourself. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. So we have a few minutes left. What have I not addressed that you'd like to share with everyone? Oh, gosh. Um, I, you know, I don't know that we touched much on the, the medium of the chakra graph paintings, which I choose watercolor. And the reason why I choose watercolor is because I can't I can't force the flow. The color goes where the color wants to go. And one of the best things that we can practice when painting a chakra graph is being able to lay down the color um, without restricting it, without getting in the way. We just surrender to the process because art is a just a beautiful form of prayer. And when we're willing to surrender to that, when we're willing to submit to that, we become enveloped in the process. And through that process, we can learn again about ourselves, we can learn about others, and we can find peace in that moment. And it's just a beautiful pathway to a softer pathway to, to self-discovery than maybe some other methods that we're used to, especially when we're doing things like shadow work, you know, how, when we're getting through those deeper, darker phases of ourselves, being able to tune in to that artwork or to that process and just surrender and let it be what it is on the page without manipulating it or without willing it to something else. Uh, is just an incredibly powerful experience. And I think the more we practice it, the more it bleeds over into our everyday life. It's like a, a bicycle. You know, once we get started, it keeps going. So love it. Do you have any online classes teaching this? I am actually getting ready to launch an online class here by oh. early next spring. So I've taken the workshop and I've created it through uh, an online platform, but it will be like in Zoom format. So you'll be able to ask me questions and we'll be able to walk through things together and practice in groups and all of those wonderful things. So oh, everything that you would that. get in my workshop, but but in an online format. So and we find that on your, on your website, which is um, jamiehomeister.com. Absolutely. Correct? Yeah, correct. That's great. I'm so excited about the fact that you're doing the workshop because this is a perfect time with people sort of stuck and they're changing in their ways. And some people are confused or they're, they're, they're hurting because their life has shifted drastically in the last almost two years. Absolutely. And this is a beautiful outlet to heal yourself mm -hmm. or a family member or a friend who might be going through something really challenging we you know we all have experiences that sometimes where we're at this crossroads we have these challenges we don't know where we're going we don't know who to go to and yet someone who has this ability can help them guide their path 
or open up their eyes to what path they might be interested in going down. I love that. Yeah. And that's really what it's about. It's about creating a piece of artwork that is a map to the self, right? And once we can bring these concepts about our deeper emotions or things that maybe we're not even recognizing in the moment of, or even conscious of, when we can give those a name and we can begin to, um, then we can begin to place them for ourselves. And then once we start that process, everything begins to open up for us. And so, you know, the moment we even think about beginning to paint is when spirit starts to work with us and begin to help us to heal. So. I love that. Thank you, Jamie. I can't believe the hour's up. I am so grateful that you've been on the show and that you're sharing all this really powerful information and a technique that's a little bit outside the box, so to speak, or outside the lines. Let's put it that way, um, for to help people to to empower them, to help them with their discovery, and to help them heal, which is really powerful. What you're doing is such powerful work for people. So thank you so much. I'm so honored for you being here. Check out Jamie at Jamie Holmeister, H O M E I S T E R dot com. Don't forget, check out the book, the Chakra Graph System, Paint Your Way through the subtle bodies, which you can find on target.com, amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and on Jamie's website. So don't miss the opportunity to get that. And who knows, maybe have some fun when it gets cold and you're stuck inside. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you again, Jamie. I want to thank everyone at Voice America for all you do for me, getting me up and running and getting the show sounding so great. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank Bridget, my right hand, my left hand. As you know, I don't know what I'd do without you, so I want to thank you. I want to thank you, the listening audience, for taking the time out of your day, out of your life, to participate in this podcast in whichever capacity you've participated in it, whether it's listening, watching. And I, I hope that the intent of what you can get out of this, learn different techniques, modalities, meet new people like Jamie, who you might not be able to find otherwise to be introduced to some beautiful healing, empowering techniques. So thank you for taking the time out of your day and out of your life for that. I want to remind you to check my my website out at marlagoldberg.com and Goldberg has two R's. In addition, Clubhouse. If you don't have Clubhouse, please download Clubhouse and join me every Monday with psychic medium Sherry Jewell as we lead the, the conversational room, Spirit Talks and Convos. So it's 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. I'll help you tune in. You get to participate. It's not just us talking. You get to be on stage and talk with us and share your experiences and outlooks. So please tune into our Clubhouse page, Spirit Talk and Convos, each and every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. And as always, as I leave you till next week, I send you love, I send you blessings, and I send you gratitude. Know how grateful I am that you're in my life in whatever capacity you're in it. And if you haven't heard these words today, or even if you had, I'm going to say them. I love you. You are loved. You are never alone because you have spirits around you each and every time. If you need something, ask. They will provide for you. So stay well, take care, and stay safe. Bye for now.